Do you live in an expensive area like New York, LA, San Francisco, or DC? Do you want to invest in real estate, but homes are just way too expensive where you're at? That's exactly how I felt, and I started investing while living in New York City. I had no clue where to start. Everything around me was just way too pricey. I wanted to invest out of state, you know, somewhere in the middle of the country, but I was too scared to invest in a place that I'd never been and knew nothing about. So I decided to analyze 30 of the best and most affordable rental markets around the US, and I think you'll really like what I found. I'm gonna break them down, and I'm gonna tell you something really cool that I did at the end. There's over 19,000 cities in the US, so that was overwhelming. Where the heck do I start? I needed to come up with an actual list of cities. I started first by doing some research on some articles I found online. Then I watched a few people on TikTok that also talked about rental markets, and I added a few places where I knew other investors were investing. And so the cities I came up were over here, the ones listed on screen. Now let's move on to the data. First, we got crime rate. Crime is important because cities with higher crime rates means that people don't wanna live there, and if people don't wanna live there, that means home prices won't increase, and it means rents won't increase either. Not to mention that the type of person that you're gonna to rent to is probably not the person that's gonna pay you on time, or ever. So I went to citydata.com to pull up the crime rate for each city. This is not too surprising, but all the cities I found were either around the national average or as high as triple the national average crime rate. The next thing I found were unemployment rates for each city. This is just the amount of people that don't have jobs. The more people that don't have jobs, then they can't afford to buy homes, and they can't afford to pay you rent because they got no income. So you wanna pick cities where the unemployment rate is lower, this way you can increase your chance of getting higher rents. On citydata.com, I found the unemployment rate for November 2020 for each of these cities. Some seem to get harder by COVID than others. Next up is population growth. This is the amount of people moving to or away from a city. This is important because the more people that move to an area, the higher the demand for housing. Higher demand for housing means higher home prices and higher rents. You can get this by going to usa.com rank, searching your city and pulling the population growth over the last 20 years. This was interesting because some of these markets had tons of people leaving and others had lots of people coming in. The next factor was the median home Home price. We were looking for lower median home prices. This way we could actually afford to invest in these properties somewhere around the nation. The cheaper the home, the lower your mortgage and the lower your monthly expenses. That means more cash flow. For this, I went to zillow.com slash research slash data. I downloaded the spreadsheet for all of the city's home values. I looked for the city, then I went to the last column to find the last month's home price. Now this part to me was so crazy. You could find houses for less than $100,000 or even better, almost all of the ones on the list were less than $200,000. This really showed me it was possible. Then I looked up the average rents. The higher the rents in the city, the higher chances of cash flow. I used Rentometer because I paid for it, but for you, you can use zumper.com slash rent hyphen research slash the town name hyphen state abbreviation. So for Houston, it would be Houston hyphen TX. Now this step was a little tricky. You add up all the median rental amounts for each bedroom type from studio all the way to four or five bed if they have it. Then you divide that number by the amount of bedroom types there were. So for example, if we had studios all the way up to four bed, you add up all five of those types and then you divide that by five. That is your average rent. Another thing that I wasn't expecting was that the rents were actually a lot lower in some of these parts of the country, lower than I had ever expected. Then once you have those last two, you wanna find the price to rent ratio. You simply take the median home price and divide it by the annual average rent. This is important because it tells you how high the home prices are compared to the rents. The higher the rents and the lower lower the price, the better your chances of cash flowing. So take the rental amount from the last step, multiply that by 12, and then divide that into the home price. That's your price to rent ratio. So many of these cities were better than San Antonio, which is where I'd been looking since like May 2020 and struggled to find cash flowing properties. Then I looked up property taxes. Property taxes are what the town charges you for owning the land and the house on that land. The lower this number is, the lower your expenses are, the lower your expenses, the higher your chances of cash flowing. So you go to smart asset dot com slash taxes slash property taxes. You type in the city and then copy that rate. Coming from New York and New Jersey, where most of my life property taxes have been super high, it was refreshing to see property tax rates under 1%. Lastly, I want to invest in a state that is landlord friendly. That means that the laws in the state allow you, the landlord, to kick out a tenant if they're not paying. This has been a huge issue with the moratoriums that happened this past year. So I use this map to give me a quick idea of whether or not a state is more landlord friendly or tenant friendly. 
In New Jersey, I can't even evict a tenant if they don't pay rent because of the moratorium. This hurts me because I still have to pay my mortgage. Now, what you need to do is compare all of the cities. So what I do is I sort them by a factor like crime rate, or unemployment rate, and then I give them a score, one being the best and 29 being the worst. This way, the ones with the lowest scores were the best cities. And as I did this, I said to myself, what if I decided to go visit all these cities and show you guys what it was like to be on the ground there? I could record and show you what it was like to see this city, to look at properties and show you the home prices and the rents. So I actually took my Tesla from New Jersey and drove it down to Texas. In over nine days, I visited eight of the best cities on that sheet. I documented the whole thing, interviewed agents and investors there. And I went to go see properties in all of those cities and I actually made offers on some of them and got a few accepted. Click the subscribe button to see what it's like on the ground in some of the best rental markets around the US.